Let's review math, grade 4, module 6, lesson 5. Decimal fractions. Topic B, tenths and hundredths. Let's begin by looking at these area models. In this first area model, I have a hole that's separated into ten parts, and I have one of those parts shaded. Now in the second area model, I have a hole that's separated into a hundred parts, and I have ten of those parts shaded. But when we look at these two area models, we can see that the same amount is shaded in. This is showing us that one-tenth is equal to ten-hundredths. And if we want to write that as a decimal, we would write it like this. Zero decimal one, which reads the same as the fraction one-tenth, is equal to zero decimal one zero, which is said the same way as the fraction ten hundredths. One-tenth is equal to ten hundredths. Now I'm going to show it through division. So let's take a look at what we've divided. We've taken our ten hundredths and we're saying that it's equal to ten hundredths divided by ten tenths and that is equal to one tenth. Now let's look more closely at this division and compare it to this area model. To do that I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. So, ten hundredths. This is the model that's representing ten hundredths. What we did with our ten hundredths is we divided it by ten tenths. When we do that, what we're doing is we're taking this group of ten and we're putting them together like this. So that instead of having a hundred pieces, each column of ten becomes one. And our hundred pieces become ten columns. So ten hundredths is equal to ten hundredths divided by ten tenths, which is equal to one tenth. Let's try that again with three tenths. Let's say we have three-tenths is equal to thirty-hundredths. Well, let's think about that first with our area model. This is what it would look like with our area model. We have our first one, which is representing three-tenths, and then this one, which is representing thirty-hundredths. And we can see that an equal amount is shaded in. If I want to write this as a decimal, I would write zero decimal three, which is three tenths is equal to zero decimal three zero which is thirty hundredths. When I go to read these decimals I read them just like these fractions. Now let's show this with the same division that we used with, with our one tenth. Well again we're going to be looking at taking these columns of ten and putting them together like these. So that's what we're doing with our division. So I'm taking thirty hundredths and saying it's equal to thirty hundredths divided by ten tenths which is equal to three tenths because thirty divided by ten is three and a hundred divided by ten is 10. Now I can also reverse this and do it the other way. If I wanted to start with 3 tenths, I can make that look like this, but not through division. I would have to use multiplication. 3 tenths, so in this case what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by 10. So Basically, I'm drawing the horizontal lines that are on this one. I would be drawing them on here because I'm taking this one-tenth piece and separating it into ten parts. And I'm taking this one-tenth piece 
and separating it into ten parts. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Now, if I wanted to know the amount that's shaded in, I would have to think about this part being separated into ten pieces and this part being separated into ten pieces. So that would be ten, twenty, five. Twenty-five hundredths. I know that it would have to be out of a hundred because I'm dealing with a meter and the meter's been separated into ten parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here's two of them. So that would be ten, twenty, and then here's five more, twenty-five. So this is one way to represent twenty-five hundredths. But let's think of another way. Let's use an area model like this. If I want this area model to show 25 hundredths, what I would need to do would be to shade in, that's 10, that would be 20, and then I would need to shade in 5 more. So now this area model is showing 25 hundredths. And if I want to write that as a decimal, it would be 0 decimal 25. 25 hundredths. When I read this decimal, I read it just like this fraction. All right, let's try another one. Now let's try 52 hundredths. So now I need to shade in 52 of these parts. And I can kind of count by 10 and do it 10 at a time. So it would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then just shade in two more, two. So now I have 52 out of my 100 shaded in. That's 52 hundredths. And if I want to write that as a decimal, be 0 decimal 0.52 or 0 decimal 52. And when I say this decimal, I say it just like this fraction. Let's try another one. This time we're going to do 35 hundredths. So I would go about it the same way I did before, and I'm going to shade them in 10 at a time. So that's 10, 20, 30, 5. So now this area model is representing 35 hundredths. If I want to write this as a decimal, it would be 0 decimal 35. And if I read this, I read it just like this fraction, 35 hundredths. Let's take a look at another area model. This area model has one column shaded in. It has 10 pieces shaded in out of 100 because one-tenth is equal to ten hundredths. And if I want to write that as a decimal, it would be written this way. One-tenth is equal to ten hundredths. But I want to show what that would look like with place value disks. So here I have one-tenth. So this is one-tenth, and I'm going to put it down here to represent one-tenth. Now we're saying that it's equal to ten of these hundredths. So I'm going to put my little equal sign here, and then I'm going to have to come over here and I'm going to have to get ten of these. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the place value disks act a lot like our area model. I have ten parts here. I have ten parts here. These parts are called hundredths. If I were to combine all of these pieces and make one column of one-tenth, then I would be representing that with a one-tenth disk. Now let's think about if we had sixteen hundredths. I'm going to represent that with sixteen of these disks, sixteen of these place value disks that are each worth one hundredth. I have sixteen of them. Now one of the things I can do when I have at least ten so I can group them together and trade them in for a one-tenth disk. So now instead of having 16 green ones, I have one that's worth one-tenth and I have six green ones. I have six that are worth one-hundredth. So that means I have 16 hundredths one-tenth and six hundredths. So let's try a couple more like that. Let's say I have five hundredths. What would that look like with disks? Well, I have five hundredths. And if I want to write this as a decimal, I would write it like this, five hundredths, zero decimal, zero five. Now let's try another one. Let's try twenty-five hundredths. Well, since I already have these five hundredths out, I'm going to use them. And now I just need to have twenty more, right? But I don't want to pull twenty more of these, because if when I get ten of these, I can trade them in for one like this. This one-tenth is equal to ten of these green ones. Ten of the one-hundredth disks. So I need, this would be ten hundredths, this would be twenty hundredths, and then I have five hundredths. And I can show this as a decimal like this, twenty-five hundredths. I can also think about this in number bond form. Twenty-five hundredths is the same as two-tenths plus five hundredths. Let's try another one. Now let's do sixty-four hundredths. Well, in order to do this, I would have to draw sixty-four of these green disks, but I don't want to do that. That's too many. But I could think of the six as being tenths. I have six tenths and I have four hundredths. So I have six like this, and I have four of these. This is sixty-four hundredths. And as a decimal, I can write it this way. Sixty-four hundredths. And I can think about it in number bond form. Six tenths, and here they are, plus four hundredths.
All right, that'll take care of things for lesson five, where we've been modeling the equivalence of tenths and hundredths using area models and number disks.